Good morning. My name is Chris Menser. On behalf of the A Street Church Christ, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Bible Truths. If you'd like to follow along this morning, let's start in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, last book of the Bible. And uh, we're going to look at verse 8. Today's subject is going to be one that's a little on the uncomfortable side. It's something that a lot of people do not like to talk about, but it is one that is very important because it is one discussed in the Bible. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8 says there, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And of course, we're talking about the phrase, and all liars, and our subject is that of lying. First, let's begin with the definition from uh, the dictionary. It says, the definition of a lie is a false statement made with deliberate attempt to deceive. Pretty simple. And of course, the description of a liar is a person who tells lies. In the Bible, and Paul wrote in Titus chapter 1 and verse 12 that the Cretans were noted as being liars. But we're going to look at first the origin of lies. And of course, to do that, we look at the father of lies. If you turn with me to the New Testament, John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus there is talking to the Pharisees. He says, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. And of course, that is the devil being the father of lies. Now, in regards to what he said, he was a murderer from the beginning. This takes us all the way back to the beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, looking at verses 1 through 5. Genesis chapter 3, we'll start with verse 1. It says there, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will surely not die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, I don't know about you, but personally, if any animal were to come up to me and talk to me, I would be very uh, suspicious of that. But unfortunately, for Adam and Eve, that was not the case. Now, hold your place there. We'll look at that in a little bit as we'll continue on the story. Another example we have of uh, the devil's lies is in impugning Job's motives. If you turn to the book of Job, beginning in chapter 1, this is shortly after God brought forth all the angels and the saints in heaven, and Satan showed up. And uh, starting in verse 8, Job chapter 1, it says there, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And of course the outcome of that is God allowed Satan to go and destroy everything that he owned. All of his property, all of his possessions, and even his family. And the story takes up in Job chapter 2 because Job did not sin against God after he had lost everything. But in verse 4 or 5 of Job chapter 2, it goes on to his next challenge. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will surely curse you to his face. And once again, Job took and... Or Rather, Satan took and cursed uh, Job's body, putting boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, and basically allowed everything in terms of negativity of his fleshly body to suffer, except he did not take his life. And in fact, even then, Job did not curse God. Another example we have of Satan's lies can be found in the New Testament in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. This is the story of when Jesus was taken into the wilderness to be tempted. Starting in Matthew 4, verse 1, 
Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had lasted forty days and forty nights afterward, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it was written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. The devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Well, let's turn now to some examples of different kinds of liars. A lot of people just look at people who deceive as just simply a liar, but there are actually various categories of the types of liars. First we look at what is called the common liar. Going by our description at the beginning of the lesson, it talks about a lie for the purpose of deceiving or to exaggerate. In Psalm 50 and verse 19 it says there, you give your mouth to evil and your tongue frames deceit. Perfect example of this can be found in the uh, Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 13 verses 11 through 22. In the interest of time, we'll not look at the entire passage, but just give an overview and then look closely at some of the more verses. This is a story of a young uh, prophet of God. Uh, I don't believe his name is mentioned, but he was told by God to be, it was forbidden for him to drink, eat, or travel any way through Bethel. And yet, a story picks up in verse 15 when an old man comes to him. 1 Kings chapter 13, start verse 15. 15 there, it says, Then he came to him, says, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go in with you, neither can I eat bread, nor drink water with you in this place. For I have been told by the word of the Lord, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water there, nor return by going the way you came. This is the old man talking. He said to him, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. And he, he, of course, was lying to him. And so the young prophet then went back with him, and he ate bread in his house and drank water. Well, the result of what he had done was very dire. As we look at the next few verses, starting at verse 20, it says, Now it happened as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried out to the man of God, who came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed my word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but you came back, ate bread, and drank water in this place which the Lord said, Eat no bread and drink no water, your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. And in verse 24 it says there, When he had gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him, and his corpse was thrown on the road, and the donkey stood by it, the lion also stood by the corpse. Listening to a lie as opposed to listening to what God said, he basically lost his life. Next example we have of the kinds of liars is a cowardly liar. In Isaiah chapter 57 verse 11 it says there, And of whom you have been afraid or feared that you have lied and not remembered me, nor taken it to your heart. Is it not because I have held my peace from of old that you do not fear me? And of course the perfect example or description of cowardly liars is that of those who are afraid to tell the truth. Going back to our story in the book of Genesis in the Garden of Eden, looking this time Genesis chapter 3 verses 9 through 13, this story takes up where after both Adam and Eve had eaten of the forbidden fruit. Genesis chapter 3 starting at verse 9, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman who you gave me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. 
And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So here it is, we have a passing of blame because they're both afraid to admit the truth. Not only did Adam blame Eve, but he also blamed God. If you look back there in uh, verse 12, it says, The woman who you gave to be with me. He's saying to God that, well, if it weren't for the fact that you gave me this woman, I wouldn't have sinned. Yep. And so then when he turned to Eve, Eve, of course, blamed the serpent. And, of course, the old joke, if you're not familiar with it, is Adam blamed Eve, Eve blamed the serpent, and the serpent did not have a leg to stand on. The other example we find is that of uh, Abraham calling his wife Sarah his sister. Turning to Genesis chapter 20, look at verses 2 through 11. It says, Now Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman you have taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Did you not say to me, She is my sister? And she, even she herself, said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. And God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet. But he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. So Abimelech rose early in the morning, called all his servants, and told them all these things in his hearing, and the men were very much afraid. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? Have I offended you that you had brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done a great deed to me that ought not to be done. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will kill me on account of my wife. So he was afraid to tell the truth and the identity of Sarah being his wife. Now let's turn to the uh, New Testament, look at a couple more examples. First we look at John chapter 9. This is the story of the blind man who had received his sight by Jesus. We're going to pick up the story in verse 19, in which the Pharisees go to his parents, to ask him in regards to him receiving his sight. John chapter 9, starting at verse 19, it says, And they asked him, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered and said to them, We know that this is our, our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. And who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. In verse 22 is the kicker there. It says, His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. So rather than admit that Jesus was Christ, the Son of the living God, they chose rather to keep their position within the synagogue and more or less lie by diverting the attention to their son. Next example we have is that of Peter denying Christ. Again, in the interest of time, we will not look at the entire passage, but it can be found in Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 through 74. This is uh, after Christ was uh, arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and the rest of the apostles had taken off. Peter followed along, but, but further behind, and he stopped into the courtyard and warmed his hands by the fire amongst the Gentiles. And individuals, while they were in there, recognized Peter as who he was, being one of the twelve. But yet, Peter continued to deny his knowledge of Jesus, even to the point where he went and cursed and swore because an individual said that he knew him because of his speech made him known. Another example we have of a kind of liar is that of a malicious liar. In Psalm 28, verse 3, it says, Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. The malicious liars is brought about by hatred or spite. Proverbs chapter 26, verses 24 and 25, there says, He who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. 
perfect example of a malicious liar is that of Potiphar's wife against Joseph, found in Genesis chapter 39, verses 14 through 17. This is after Potiphar's wife attempted to get Joseph to lie with him, and he took off fleeing fornication, but had left his garment behind. And the story picks up in verse 14. It says there that she called to the men of her house and spoke to him, saying, See, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he had heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to mock me. And of course, the outcome of her malicious lie put Joseph in prison. Another example can be found in Matthew chapter 2, verses 8. This is the story of Herod after the wise men came looking for the baby Jesus. Verse 8, there it says, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back the word to me that I may come and worship him also. Of course, his intent was to kill the baby Jesus because he was referred to as a king. And he did not want any kind of uh, rivalry to his throne. Another example we have is that of commercial liars. A commercial liar is basically one who obtains money under false pretenses. An example can be found in the Old Testament, the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, looking at verses 20 through 27. Again, in the interest of time, we'll not uh, look at the entire passage. But we'll talk about a little bit about, this comes right after um, uh, Naaman's cleansing of his leprosy when he was told to dip seven times in the river Jordan. And he did not pay for, pay Elisha for this uh, service, but yet his servant, Gerhazi, decided that he was going to get payment instead. So we'll look at verse, sorry, verse 20. It says there, But Gerasi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master spared Damon the Syrian, while not receiving from his hands and what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. Now, let us first jump down to verse 23 here. It says, So Naaman said, Please, take two talents. And he urged him, and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments, and handed them two of his servants, and they carried him on ahead. This, of course, was because of the fact that uh, Gerazi had told him that a couple of people had showed up and were in need of talents of silver and changes of garment. And so, in verse 24, it says, When he came to the citadel, he took them from his hand and stored them away in the house. Then he let the men go, and they departed. Now, in verse 25, continue on, it says, When he went in and stood before his master Elisha, said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, leprous as white as snow. Imagine the kind of lie to tell in which you have found out and you to receive not only the leprosy of this individual, but all your descendants thereafter. Another example can be found in the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 28. This is the story of the Roman soldiers. This comes after the tomb was found empty in Christ's resurrection. But of course, they did not want to admit that Christ had risen from the dead, but rather conceive a lie for this. Matthew, chapter 28, looking at verses 12 through 15. It says, When they assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a large sum of money to their soldiers, saying, Tell him his disciples came at night and stole him away while he slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed, as this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. And another example we find in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, one of the more popular uh, stories in regards to lying is that of Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira had sold their property for uh, their possessions and so sold it for a certain amount of money, but they kept back the proceeds of the money and brought forward a certain part of it to the apostles' feet. In other words, 
let's say they sold it for $10,000 but gave $5,000 to the apostles. And what, they were what they were trying to say to the apostles is that the $5,000 was the amount that they were paid for the property. So that was lying to the apostles. Picking up in verse 3 then it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land of yourself? While it remained not your own, and after it was sold, was it not in your own control? And of course the story goes on and both Ananias and his wife Sapphira died. Finally we look at an example of a religious liar and that started in Romans chapter 3 verse 4. It says there, Certainly not, indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and you may overcome when you are judged. An example of those who are religious liars, of course, are those who teach false doctrines. First, we find Romans chapter 1, verses 24 and 25. It says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Another example is that of those who are claiming to have apostolic powers. Let's take a look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 13 through 15. It says there, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his visitors also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Another example is that of those who profess to know him but are disobedient. In 1 John chapter 2, looking at verse 4, it says there, He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Another example is those who claim to love God while hating the brethren. In 1 John chapter 4, looking at verses 20 and 21, it says there, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he does not love his brother whom he has seen, and how can he love God whom he has not seen? Now, it's another example I want to look at real quick here. In James chapter 3, looking at verses 9 through 12, this is a discussion of the tongue. James chapter 3, starting at verse 9, it says there, with it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring can yield both salt and water and fresh. Next we want to look at how God views lying. Well, simply put, he hates it. Looking at Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19, there it says, These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Again, in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, it says there, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. Finally, let us look at where is the destiny of the liars. In Proverbs chapter 19, and verse 5, it says there, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies will not escape. And we are, of course, talking about the final day, the day of judgment. He may escape while here on the earth may even go unpunished, but in the day of judgment, the very final day, he will be punished and he will no wise escape. Another example can be found in Revelation 21 and verse 27, again back to the final book of the Bible. It says there, but you shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or cause an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the, the Lamb's book of life. So if you are a defiler, an abomination, or even a liar, you will not be written in the book of life. Therefore, you will have no part in the second coming in terms of heaven. And finally, going back to our, our text, we look at Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. 
saying there, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So your eternity will be in hell. So in conclusion today, we look at one simple statement from uh, Psalm 119, verse 163. There it says, I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law. And this is what we should do, is we should abhor lying. Even telling little white lies is something we should avoid at all costs. I thank you very much for your time in this lesson today. And if you have any questions or comments concerning this lesson or any of the lessons that you have heard on this program, feel free to call the number that we provide for you. And if you want to set up a Bible study with any of us, we'll be happy to do so. If not, come down to the church building on Sundays or Wednesday nights and hear another gospel lesson preached to you and uh, study with us in any chance you might have. If there's anything we can do for you to become a better Christian or to become a Christian, to start your path on the path of righteousness, that you, ask, you will contact us as soon as possible and don't put it off because the Lord could come at any day. This is another episode of Bible Truths. Thank you very much.